These days, it's cool to call yourself an entrepreneur, but the real entrepreneurs strive for continuous improvement, innovation, and willing to take risks of detrimental proportions. Join me as we meet the people that are making this happen. One by one, they are sharing the story of their journey as an American entrepreneur. In this episode of An American Entrepreneur, we're going to Houston, Texas to meet a gentleman that not only has a full-time job as an aircraft mechanic, but he started a company that specializes in aircraft detailing. So come join me as he shares the story of his journey, as well as how he has entered into the world of franchising. So introduce yourself and tell us about your business. My name is Josh Hernandez. Uh, I'm the owner of Sparrowhawk Mobile Detailing. We're a national franchise with uh, various locations. At the at this time, we have officially eight, but we're on the verge of closing a total of 12 uh, new franchises opening up throughout the nation. So when did you start this business, Josh? This started in January of this year, 2022. Darn, so we're 11 and a half months into it and you've already got franchises. 11 and a half months, and it's mind boggling to even say that. I kind of have to pinch myself and is this actually happening right now? It's, it's uh, Okay. It's crazy. So tell us how you got in this industry to begin with. So I got in this industry at the age of 17. I enlisted in the, the Air Force and that got my foot in the door, I guess you could say, into aviation. I was a jet engine mechanic for the F-15s and uh, I got out and did it as a government contractor. And then once that was done, I realized I wanted to get into the, the general aviation side, the, the, the public side of things. And I've been in it ever since. And so I'm, I'm an AMPIA, which is the highest uh, mechanical certification you can get from the Federal Aviation Administration. And um, that's that's what I do for a living, uh, my nine to five, if you will. And uh, I, I turn wrenches on aircraft, uh, specializing in the smaller piston aircraft, but it, you know everything from World War II birds to private jets, I have the capabilities of, of working on them. All right, so whenever you started this business, how did you decide on doing a detailing versus opening up maybe an aircraft maintenance business? So that was actually my goal for a long time was to, to open up a repair facility and just do my own thing, right? Eventually, it, it, of course, it takes years and years of experience to get to that point. Uh, but you know, after being in this industry and, and we deal with detailers on a regular basis, whenever we get done, putting what we call our monkey prints all over the aircraft with the grease marks, with the fingerprints and everything all over it. Uh, we normally call out a detailer to come out and make it look pretty before we give it back to the customer. And that was whenever the light bulb clicked because some of the two most hated people in aviation are pilots and detailers. So, um, it's a joke, but I mean, there's some truth behind Hi. it. But detailers are kind of known to mess <laughs> stuff up. Um, a lot of times you have individuals who don't know anything about aircraft and they just grab whatever's the po most popular chemical at this time or brand chemical and they spray it on and they wipe it off and that's all they do that's that's what most people consider detailing but really it's just cleaning uh, and and a lot of times they'll break components or spray stuff where it doesn't belong and you know or, man this guy did this or this guy did that can you believe this and, you know so I kind of saw the gap of there's there's a gap for for genuinely trained detailers that, that are aviation specific, right? And and uh, I guess experts, if you will. Experts, yeah. Rather than just grabbing some Joe Schmo and saying, hey, do you want to clean an aircraft? Yeah, I'll clean an aircraft. Right. That sounds awesome. Well, there's a lot of ways to kill people in this industry. So you can't just grab somebody, give them a rag and some chemical and say, have at it. You've got to know about all your systems. you got to know, hey, you can't spray this there because there's been genuine deaths throughout history from detailers that mess the systems up in the aircraft. You know, they have a pedostatic system or a static port that they put tape over to protect it, and they don't pull that tape off. And, you know, airlines, there's been several crashes where hundreds of people die, all because of a single piece of tape from somebody who forgot something or didn't know that they can't spray this there, or they'll spray, you know, uh, fluids into ports accidentally, but it's just a lack of knowledge. And, um, and when they get up to altitude, it's cold up there, so it'll freeze and then they don't have any systems and it's pitch black at night and you know it's just 
you gotta be very careful. You know, you can't pull over in a cloud like you can in the automotive industry. If you mess something up, well, you just pull over on the side of the road. So it's kind of one of those things where um, I just saw the gap of the lack of quality. So from an AMPIA perspective, which is that certification I was saying, uh, building a detailing company with that as the basis, all the guys who come through and, and hop on board our team, we train them at a very, very, very high level of understanding of aircraft. They don't just hop on there, you know what I mean? And, and another thing that separates us from a lot of uh, other detailing companies is, we're like I said, we're not just the, the spray on and wipe off. Uh, we, we do full on paint restorations. We grab old oxidized paint jobs and perform a two to three stage correction on the paint and bring that old oxidized paint where you have aircraft owners, and it's my favorite part about the job, is you have these aircraft owners that are like, ah, it's it's old, it's done, I have to repaint it, you know, spend 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way up to six figures on a paint job, depending on the size of the aircraft. And we're like, hold on, give us a, give us an opportunity just to show you. And they're amazed at the turnaround. We make those old paint jobs look like they're three, three years old, you know what I mean? And they're just blown away at, at what we can do. And that's, that's detailing, bringing the artistic side of it, where we, we take old, birds and make them look beautiful again rather than just surface level wipe on right. wipe off kind of stuff well how'd you come up with the name sparrowhawk mobile detailing so i get that question a lot sparrowhawk mobile detailing so the sparrowhawk comes from the general aviation side of the industry uh, you have an aircraft an aircraft called a cessna 150 and there was an unofficial name that was given to one of those uh, cessna 150s there was an stc a site uh, supplemental type certificate, which is a modification that you can do to the aircraft. Uh, because when it comes to aircraft, you can't just change something up. Right. You have to get all the permission from the FAA to be able to do that. And one of the things that they did with one of those little aircraft, it was an acrobatic aircraft, they would beef up the engine. So this STC allowed them to, to beef up the engine. And Cessna is known for their names or for their aircraft having hawk affiliated in their names there's various different hawks so one of the ones that was unofficially given to the cessna 150 when it had this engine modification that made it more powerful and could fly faster and the climb rate and all that stuff uh, by having this stc done is it was called the sparrow hawk stc so it even got to the point where instead of it being just a cessna 150 it was a cessna 150 sparrow hawk that let everybody know this was the beefed up mm -hmm. you know muscle version. It's the Porsche. Yeah, it, you know, the, it, yeah. it was the performance. Mm -hmm. It had the performance upgrade. So um, Sparrowhawk. And not only that, but the bird itself, when you start kind of digging into the bird, you can see why the little bitty 150, it's, it's the real deal Sparrowhawk. I mean, that's a pretty impressive bird, what it can do right. and the capabilities. Well, what are all the services you offer? So we specialize in aviation. We specialize in anything aircraft as far as aesthetics go, interior, exterior, uh, but we are branching out into the automotive, into the marine and RV. If we can work on a four or five, $6 million jet and make it look beautiful and we can be trusted with, with all the expenses and, and high-end equipment that comes along with it, uh, why can't we work on, a, on an automotive or on, on a vehicle or, or a boat or anything like that? Same concept, right? So um, we, the same professionalism that comes from the aviation standpoint, as far as the uniforms, the presentability, professionalism, the van, the, the, the equipment. We're bringing that professionalism that is a standard and a demand in the aviation industry to all of it, all industries. So the automotive, the marine, the RV. So we, we really, really focus on the ceramic coating side of things. Uh, so we do full blown paint corrections and ceramic coatings. Uh, as well as the detailing. So we offer that to the automotive, the marine, and the RV as well as just as well as the aviation. Okay. Have you ever owned a business before? No. So this is your first business? This is my first business. Uh, I've done some other things dealing with ministry. Um, I'm a preacher. <laughs> so uh, I had a ministry that I was a steward over and kind of running and whatnot. By the way, we're in a hangar. We're so. in a hangar. Yeah, there's, you got the wind blowing, right. of course, of all days right. today. But, um, you know, I ran that ministry and was, was doing that, but it wasn't in comparison to, to what this mm -hmm. is, you know what I mean? But it kind of gave me a little bit of a, an idea of how to kind of manage things. So did you have any mentors? 
I have various mentors that, that I look up to. One of them is, is my employer right now. Uh, his name's Skip Harrison. And uh, one thing I love about individuals who are entrepreneurs are the ones that came from nothing. The ones who started off and didn't have a head start and they made it happen. I love that. I love that and it's inspiring. And um, I've always kind of had that mindset of, of, of hustling and, and whatnot, but looking up to, to, to my boss, Skip, he started off as a mechanic and then he got his pilot's license and then he got, after he got his pilot's license, then he started his own business and charter and, and, uh, and aircraft management and, and maintenance. And to see that he, he did it, you know what I mean? Like, like he was just like me, you know, and now he's, he's, he's very, doing very good for himself and he's, he's running a very successful business in aviation, which is hard to do. Profit margins are razor thin and he's making it happen. And it's just, it's inspiring, you know what I mean? And it kind of lets you know, like, hey, you don't have to come for money. You don't have to have a huge trust fund, you know, right. given to you to be able to invest into a business. You can just start, start from the ground up. Really small. And right. and um, that that's kind of one mentor. You know, my dad, uh, without a doubt, is, is a mentor in my family. We come from a, I come from entrepreneurs in my family. My, my parents owned a, a Mexican restaurant and I saw all the hard work and the long hours I had to go into that mm -hmm. business. So I grew up in, you know, in this, my sister owns a, a business and, and uh, we, it's, I've just been around it. You know what I mean? It's kind of in the blood, if you will. So that's and how you were inspired to start businesses. business. Started with my, because you've been around it all your life. Started with my parents, without a doubt. Uh, seeing them in various ways with, with all that. And then the big one that just kind of was like, the epiphany moment was my, my boss right now. He. He really inspired me. Just a good man. Just a good man. Mm -hmm. Takes care of his employees, and and, and uh, it was like, man, I want to be in that position. I want to be in a position where I can, I can uh, be an inspiration for one, but mentor, and look up to, and and kind of be a blueprint, if you will, for hey, you can make this happen yourself. Um, you just got to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Take that, take that risk, and and whatnot. So, well, you have a full time job right now. And you're doing this. Yes, sir. How are you finding the time to do a full-time job in this business? And you're you franchised out now. You've got how many franchisees out now? Um, we've got at this moment when we're recording this, we've got Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, uh, Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville. We're on the verge. I won't say the cities just yet, but we're we're about to close in on another four to five cities, major cities. Well, how do you find time to have a full-time job and you're running this business and you franchised out? I mean, how do you do it? It's tough. It's tough. Um, it's very demanding. It's uh Well, do you have of... anyone in the back offices? I mean, is it just My you wife helps me a works? lot. Uh, I can't brag enough on that woman. I love that woman. Um, she's a huge help and uh, she's a huge inspiration. My girls, you know, I call my girls, my wife and my two daughters. Um, so they kind of run it, they run it during the day somewhere, no, 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 what no. they can handle? She's my administrative right, help. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I've got to send out faxes or sign this or whatever, hey babe, she's an admin. Uh, so she's used, she's savvy to all that. And uh, She manages your email box probably? I, well. I manage the emails, but it's like, hey, I need this signed, I need this, hey, can you send a fax for this or this or this? So she helps me with a lot of that administrative stuff. Uh, I answer a lot of phone calls between the franchisees and questions and potential customers and I'm kind of, uh, I, have, I have my right hand man as well that's a, a franchisee out of Florida. He helps me run a lot. He takes a lot of the weight and, and uh, with his expertise, he's an AMPIA as well. So I have help. This in no way, shape or form is, is a me thing. I can't take credit for nothing and I, I refuse to take credit for nothing. Uh, I think I've mentioned it to you before, but I live my life by, by a phrase from the Protestant Reformation, which is sola de gloria, which means all glory to God and Him alone. So um, I would be a fool to first off try to take credit for any of the success that I have in my life uh, because it's all a gift and granted by God for one. But the support that I have between franchisees, between my wife, between friends who keep me motivated and, and inspired and it does get tiring. It does get draining when you're just constantly one phone call after the other and you get home and 
from working a long day at work and you got me and, texting you yeah right and then it's just like you get done with one phone call because you got to call that guy back and then as soon as you hang up another guy's calling it's like yeah, oh oh but you know um, it's rewarding though isn't it it is whenever you see the growth and you see individuals who are buying into your vision of where you want to take this and they see the potential and they see the momentum it it's rewarding it's absolutely rewarding and, and you know me being an aircraft mechanic, I, I love what I do. I love aviation, you know. You're working uh, on your license as well right, right now. Right now, I'm a student pilot. I'm on the verge of closing. I should be done by the end of the winter. I do own uh, an aircraft, a T-41. I just bought a commercial hangar out of a regional airport, a local regional airport. And so we're running operations out of there as well. And, and I live, eat, and breathe aviation. So mm -hmm. this is my passion. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be in a situation where this industry is providing for me and my family and, and to see others that are coming on board uh, across the nation that love aviation as well and they're in, in, in awe of being in a situation to work with these aircraft and, mm -hmm. and, and the passion that they have to, to bring these old you know paint jobs back to life and, and getting you know and, and seeing the customers happy and it's just a overall very 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 satisfying um, career. It's really, really cool. Well, when you started this business, did you have sole intention of going into the franchise model? Or did it just evolve that way? Tell us a little bit about that. I, I could start by saying I've always been intrigued by franchising. Before this happened, uh, the last three years, I would say, I've been looking into franchising and I've been just wondering which franchise to go. Because you were thinking about buying a franchise. I was thinking about buying a business. franchise in various different industries. Everything you could think of. I was I was not leaving nothing off the table. Um, I see the benefits of doing it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a wise move. If you're especially uh, being a new business owner, to have that structure in place that someone's already tried and true, it's tested, we know it works, that's the purpose of franchising. It's branding and to have a set, you know, business plan. So I was already looking into that for the last, you know, three years or so. And um, then this happened. And I, in the back of my mind, yeah, we could franchise. Because um, you saw that huge gap mm -hmm. that you were telling us and about And I was earlier. thinking, you know, from she the get-go. really get -go, turned it into a top-notch professional service. Grabbing, grabbing the service with the expertise behind it, most detailers don't have genuine expertise of aircraft. That's rare. It's rare to find. So to be able to have that, that knowledge that I have from doing this day in, day out from the maintenance perspective and to bring that into the aviation industry and to teach the franchisees from that level of, 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 of knowledge, um, that's definitely what separates us and has brought a better quality. The customers feel a lot more confident knowing that they have not just somebody random off the street that's getting paid and it's a nine to five for that person that genuinely love the industry, love the, they're passionate about what they do. They know um, that helps give a, a peace of mind to the customer and it, I think that's the biggest growth that we have in, in, in our, our location here in Houston uh, is, is they know that, they have that security and that peace of mind um, and that transfers over and bleeds over into the other side of it, you know what I mean? Well I met one of your guys, he's a student pilot so definitely you've got people that's in the aviation versus some Joe Schmo off the street Absolutely. with a rag and glass cleaner or something. Yep, you know, with, with our franchisees, we got one guy's former military, loves aviation, was training to be a pilot at one point. He owns a location. We've got Florida. He's an MPIA just like myself, in the military still. Um, so he lives and breeds aviation. Uh, the guy that, that, that we merged with here in Houston, I ended up merging with another detailing company to help lighten the load like we were talking mm -hmm. about. How do you manage all that? Well, I merged with a successful detailing company on the north side of Houston. Uh, he's got an extensive aviation background. Uh, the one that we have on, on, on the payroll here in Houston, he's a pilot. He already has his pilot's license and he loves aviation. So the big thing is, is finding these individuals who are passionate about the industry. Those are the best ones. Those are the best employees. Those are the best franchisees that we could possibly have, where it's not just about money, which is definitely money in the industry, um, but it's more than money. You know what I mean? That's, that's what we offer as a business compared to the next guy where he's looking at the clock and on his phone and he's, you know what I mean? Right. We've got passion driving what we do. Well, as far as this franchise model, 
let's say I'm an auto detailer and I wanted to get into this. You actually have a training course as well. They have to come through your extensive training. Is that only for people that are going to buy a franchise or you just pretty no, much sir. training course, have a training course for anyone? So we actually teamed up with the, uh, the world's leading ceramic coating company. They're called System X and they're the only one that's out there that's Boeing certified. Um, there's other ceramic coating companies that that try to push themselves on the, in the aviation market and they're fairly successful at it. But uh, System X is the only one that's got that Boeing stamp that says, hey, mm -hmm. they're tried and true. We've tested them, we put them through the ringer, we'll put our stamp on their product. So we're teamed up with System X and we teach a national course where we have people, uh, one of the courses that we taught recently, we had people from San Diego all the way to Rhode Island and everywhere in between. and. Uh, they came to Houston, Texas, where we actually have a, a partnership with Lone Star Flight Museum. And uh, we work and, and, and show the students, we teach them, you know, all the basics. As much as you can fit in in a couple days, right? You can't teach everything, but you can give them the basics and the foundation of um, what to expect transitioning from the automotive market into the aviation market. And we get hands on, we teach them how to paint correct ceramic coat. Uh, aircraft and, and um, doing bright work, which is what you see right here, the, the chrome looking parts of the aircraft, if you will, it's not chrome, but that's the easiest relatable way of putting it. Um, teach them how to polish leading edges and, and do bright work and things of that nature. So we grab those people who already have a foundation in the automotive industry. They're already established in doing the high end stuff like the paint corrections. They can grab a, a, a vehicle that's got all the swirls, the holographic looking stuff that you get from going through your automatic car washes or improper mm -hmm. cleaning uh, and they can make it look like a brand new paint job. They take all that out. So we grab those guys and they're the ones that are trying to take their business to the next level. And um, we train them up in the autom in the aviation side of things and, and teach them some of the knowledge that we know that in the, the things that you got to be very careful of the dangerous points, right? Because we like don't the want pedo the, the pedostatic uh, ports and the, mm -hmm. the static ports and all the systems like that. Uh, you can't just go over there and just start getting the pressure washer oh, yeah. out. And, you know, one of the biggest things I tell these guys, if you pull up to the airport with the pressure washer, they're going to kick you off and tell you to get out of here. If they know what they're doing, oh, at yeah. least. You know what I mean? So. Um, well, how long does that training take? That training is only a two day course. So it's, it's very condensed, very meat and potatoes. There's hardly any room for any kind of fluff at all in it. It's just straight to the point. And uh, it's a basic course to just teach the person the foundation to do the building blocks from there forward. You know what I mean? And of course we give them support once they leave. If they have any other questions, something we didn't cover, we always answer the phone and help them out. But that's been a huge uh, success. Uh, it's helped us with our branding as, as a company, but then also there's quite a few individuals who've gone through and realized these guys are onto something. They got something going and I want to be a part of that. You know what I mean? Because you can't just walk up into an airport and say, hey, I'm Joe Schmo and I'm an automotive detailer. They're going to be like, okay, we'll have fun with your cars. You're not touching my stuff. <laughs> well, you know what yeah. I mean? So, you know. The pilots are a very meticulous yes. type individual. They don't want just anybody touching their million dollar jet. Well, let's say I'm an automotive detailer and I was interested in this and I wanted to come do your training and buy a franchise. Tell me some advantages. What? Why would I not just do the training and start my own business? Why would I want to be a franchisee? Give me some ex reasons why. Well, the biggest thing is the power of numbers. I like to say that, the power of numbers. I've done some extensive negotiating and it's just the beginning uh, to get our overhead dramatically lower. Uh, one of the things that I've done uh, by teaming up with various uh, other owners in different sectors of the business, I've been able to get our franchisees uh, insurance down a minimal of 40%, uh, which aviation insurance, business insurance is insanely expensive. And that's one of the biggest things that keeps people from getting into this industry because you might be able to touch a smaller bird, smaller aircraft, I say bird, but a smaller aircraft um, for, and get away without getting insurance. Most of the time they won't really worry about it that much. But when you start getting into the hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in value, they want you to have a policy and they want to see proof. Let me see your, your declaration, you know what I mean? Showing that you're insured. So um, that's a big thing. We, we, so we bring uh, extensive uh, discounts for insurance. Not only that, but we've partnered up with various uh, manu supply manufacturers, high-end, high-end equipment, 
uh, you know, for all your, your consumables that you need and things like that. Uh, average is 30 to 35% off. Um, our guys with System X, uh, they offer a, a, an extensive discount with all of our franchisees. So across the board, it's cheaper to operate with us uh, as a franchisee. So it takes a at least 30% off of your overhead, which, you know, you being an entrepreneur yourself, you know, 30% is drastic, oh, absolutely yeah. drastic. Um, not only, you know, it, it helps the bottom line for sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's those benefits, but then also branding. We've already done some pretty uh, popular videos and, and whatnot out there. And then we land contracts pretty regularly due to the fact that we have multiple locations uh, represented. You know, we just landed a contract the other week uh, a very extensive contract. I mean, one of the biggest uh, paydays yet, all because we have multiple locations and this customer has 19 aircraft that range from Florida all the way to DFW and uh, a few other locations in Florida, which we all have represented. So instead of it, and, and one of the things where I was talking to the, to the young lady who was in charge of making those decisions, she was so relieved at the fact that man, I've talked to these detailers and they can only do this location and that location and this location. None of them had the means of being able to service us wherever we go. And, and it just so happened all the places that she was trying to go was where we were represented. So that, that sold us the, the, the bid or the, the contract was being able to offer her a one-stop shop. Okay, and so if you're a franchisee, you have the benefit of getting that kind of business handed to you. We're rebranding, if you will, what detailing should be. There's a difference between cleaning an aircraft, which is what a majority of detailing is, compared to genuine detailing, which is artistic in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we separate ourselves from everybody else. And you do the outside and inside. Inside and outside. Reconditioned seats, I guess. Reconditioning vacuum, seats. Shampoo, the carpets. We've got a means and connections of, we, we, what we say and what I tell customers is we're everything aesthetics. Anything that deals with the aesthetics of your aircraft, we can handle it. And if it, we've got partnerships in place with other companies uh, nationwide where if there's a ripped seat in the, in the aircraft, hey, they, they pay us, you know what I mean? Because it gets all complicated. Oh, you outsource and, you know, it and get we it outsource it with, with some of the best in the industry, people that I've worked with before I even started the company that I've seen their work. I know, you know, that's a but big thing. You have a lot is, of contacts, I can't, good, valuable contacts. Absolutely, from being in the industry for so long. I, I, I've got a lot of, a lot of contacts across the nation. So that's another thing that helps with the franchising is, is you don't have to do it on your own. Why do it on your own and go uphill whenever you can come on board? Well, I, I don't even call it a team. I call it the family. You can ask all the franchisees. I say the family because we really are. We're really right. close knit. As far as seasonality, when are you the most busy? I guess it's just year round. One thing that 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 helps the aviation side of the, the industry as far as detailing goes is there's not really a slow moment. You know, they're just flying year round. When automotive, the big elephant in the room in owning an automotive detailing business is winter's coming. Man, that sucks. Get it while the getting's good, right? It doesn't stop in aviation. These planes are always flying. And, and the RVs as well, I guess. The right? RVs as well. Can't really speak on behalf of the RVs okay. as far as winter goes, but aviation doesn't stop. Uh, it's they're always going the, if anything they pick up in the winter because they're flying more for holidays and doing those mm -hmm. kinds of things and uh, if anything it's, it's it's busier in the winter and from the the paint correction and ceramic coating side of things there are the customers who put it down for the season until you know New Year's rolls around or something that's actually the time where we end up landing a bunch of ceramic jobs because hey the aircraft's down you can take as much time as you need to get it, you know, paint correct. This is, you know, it takes four or five days depending on the size of the aircraft. A big elephant in the room for, for automotive detailing is, is you got to worry about rain. You got to worry about weather. You got to worry about all that. It's not a variable in aviation because we're in a hangar. What are some of your marketing tactics? I guess, do you advertise in any of these plane publications like Private Pilot, Plane and Pilot? What, what are your marketing tactics Not overall? Not yet. We will. Absolutely, we will. It is expensive. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the franchising side of things, we have a very, very, very small percentage. That's an option, right? If, if the franchisees want to opt in on it, um, they can. And we use that to kind of pay for our family reunion and those kinds mm -hmm. of booths at air shows and stuff like that. But another thing is that we're going to utilize that money for is, is for the, the advertisement. You know, it is expensive. Um, so... But one of the biggest thing that, that people don't realize 
in aviation is it's a different animal to market. It's not like any other industry. The biggest marketing tool that you can have in this industry is word of mouth. So one reason for our growth is the quality of, of work that we're bringing to the table that many of these people didn't even know was possible. So that's helped our growth exponentially. Um, one thing that really helped us here in the Houston area and that, that's helping all of our other locations is, is uh, instead of investing in marketing with a, with a flyer or a publication in a magazine or something like that, grabbing that old ugly bird that sits there in the corner of the hangar, we call them hangar queens, the paint's terrible, it's oxidized, full of oil and grime and hydraulic fluid, and we'll grab that one that everybody knows at that airport. And we'll say, hey, we'll do that for free or a fraction of the cost. And we'll just go all out and make it look beautiful. We did that at an airport locally here. And when it got done, it looked good. It looked phenomenal. Of course, was it perfect? Well, not, it didn't look like a brand new right. paint job, but it looked, it looked a few years old at least. You know what I mean? Like it, it looked dramatically different and we got a ton of customers from that one job because they saw holy cow these guys can do and that it just grows from there and word of mouth word of mouth of we're not your guys that just spray and wipe we we'll get the polishers out we'll get the buffers out we'll even get our painters out to get out there and paint you know those areas that are chip paints flying off we do anything aesthetics whatever you need so that's really really been the best marketing we got is the fact that we are next level detailing well, where do you see this business going five to seven years from now? So one of the biggest things that, that I envision in the next five to seven years, we're projecting 50 locations within the next five years. Just within four months of franchising, we're closing in on over 10, 11, 12, around there. Um, I think we'll hit our, 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 our projections and probably surpass them at this rate, Lord willing. And um, one thing that we really are, are, are holding on to is that with all these locations that we have, the customer, they have an aircraft because they travel, right? Under the same monthly plan that they're on, regardless of where they fly throughout the country, they can be serviced and detailed regardless if they're in New York and they decide to come to Houston, we can take care of them. Even though they're stationed and, and, and homed in New York, we can take care of them here in Houston, or if they go to Florida, they, we got our guy in Florida, if they go to Arizona or so on and so forth, Utah, um, they can get taken care of under their same monthly plan franchise wide. Uh, so that's, that's a, a big thing of what we're really aiming for is to be that national brand of detailing. Again, not the spray on, spray, right. wipe off, but artistic professional detailing. That's, that's, that's where I see us being a nationwide brand at that point. Well, do you partner with other type brands like, for example, Millionaire? I guess they've got locations all over the country. We've, That's just an example, but do you we've got with partnerships actually uh, right now in place. One of them that I can legally talk about uh, that's that's able to come out and open about is, is Sky Harbor. Uh, they're a uh, up and coming but a very successful FBO fixed-based operation, which you're talking about, millionaires and FBO. Um, they're, they're, the, they're phenomenal at what they do. They, they're, they're changing the game with the way they're going about business. But we're uh, their uh, nationally preferred detailer of choice. So wherever they open up, we're going to be opening up right along oh, with that's them. That's a great partnership. And so we've got partnerships like that coming in place uh, with, with some names out there. Can't say exactly who just right. yet, but um, definitely some partnerships in that aspect. At the end of the day, quality they see the quality they see the the prices because we are coming in cheaper than the competitors and we offer more um because of the the negotiations that we've done with our fran as a franchise with some of these uh suppliers and stuff like that we're able to keep our overhead so cheap that our profit margins are still great but we can come in cheaper because of that you know what i mean so it's helping our growth a lot in that aspect as well um so those partnerships are in place they're coming through and uh we're excited, man. We're excited. Well, how did you learn to franchise to begin with? That's a whole different area. It is. It is a whole different ball game, without a doubt. Um, I, again, can't take credit for much. Um, it's having the right people in your corner, and uh, I contacted a, a very well-known uh, franchise attorney out of uh, Utah, and. Um, 
he's handled everything for me. He's, okay. he's, he's put it all in a layman's terms for the common man to understand. And, and uh, he takes care of all the legalities and he does a lot of my filings and paperwork and all that stuff like that to where I just fork out the money and he keeps me legal and he keeps me, you know what I mean, all, all right. in place. Uh, as far as uh, understanding how it works though, absolutely, you learn through the process. He explains it all to you and stuff like that. He says, okay, Josh, we need to do this. We need to do this. If you're going to franchise in this state, what you're about to do, you need to have these paper, this paperwork in, in place. So it's just having a good team. It's having a good team. Part. He's my team, if you will. Um, and of course, you learn along the way of what, what needs to be done. So um, lots of research online and having those kinds of professionals in your corner. How much does it cost to do a franchise, roughly, to take a business from just a sole proprietorship to making it a franchise, roughly? All in all. I would have budgeted just to start 50000 When you started this business, how long did you operate before you started franchising? Of course, I know you've been in business since January of this year, but it couldn't be long. But when did you start franchising? I think it was about the five or six month mark. Okay, so that's pretty six, quick. Pretty quick. Did you build a very detailed operations manual and all that or you still there is a, that, a, a, that a standard operating procedures uh there's a generic one that we have right now uh, we're fine-tuning it as we go and he says it's normal you know when it comes mm -hmm. to franchisees that are going they're never there day one right. it's a process so we're in that point where we're fine-tuning our standard operating procedures as we get with these partnerships with suppliers and, and all that kind of stuff all that stuff gets ironed out week by week, month by month. And um, we're on the verge of doing something pretty big across the franchise as far as what those standard operating procedures. What advice would you give someone in general that wanted to start a franchise? Or they have their business and they want to turn it into a franchise. What are just some pieces of advice, or maybe some things that caught you by surprise that you wish you knew when you first got started? Patience, getting the right people Everyone's going to show interest, but not everybody is good for your brand and for your, your company that's your baby, if you will. Um, there's going to be people who say, hey, I'll pay the money, and they've got the money to do it, but you can tell they're in it for the wrong reasons. And don't sacrifice for the sake of growth having the wrong person that's going to misrepresent or not bring the proper quality or the, the proper hustle. That's a big thing that not everybody is an entrepreneur. They don't have that entrepreneur spirit, right. if you will. They like the idea of money. They like the idea of the freedom. They like the idea of making their own hours. They like the idea of all the stuff, the benefits that come with owning your own business, but they don't have the drive. They're lazy in nature. They don't want to put the effort. They don't want to do the legwork. They don't want the sacrifice that comes with it. So they try to buy into your brand and, and carry your name in hopes that that'll bring in all the work for them so they could just sit back. And right. it's like, those are toxic individuals for a franchise. You want the ones who are gonna own it. Mm -hmm. And and you know, that's one thing that that I always try to push to people who are, are interested when it's more towards the final stages when I know they're about to officially hop on board. And I stress to them, this isn't mine. Sparrowhawk Mobile Detailing is not mine. Did I start it? Yes. but. It's yours. This is your business. A lot of them operate under their own business. They have their own uh, baby that they've nurtured and grown, and it, it's their brand, and they're rebranding to Sparrowhawk. I tell them, it's not that you're giving up what you've already done. You're just doing it in a different way, and you're teaming up with the family. So you do actually turn people down? Yes, yes. There's been. Because it uh, could really hurt your brand. There's, there's several that I've, that I've turned down where they they just see the money there is money in aviation a lot of times not in the maintenance industry it's razor thin in that industry yeah, yeah. but but there are sectors of the the industry that are huge profit margins and this is one of them but there's a lot of liability uh, that's the biggest thing that's why you're charging more to work on these aircraft not only is your insurance and everything more expensive dramatically expensive but a liability what if you accidentally mess up the paint on the wing of this aircraft is thirty thousand dollars what if you're on top of the the fuselage you're on top and you're polishing up there doing something mm -hmm. and your buffer drops in the wing and you puncture a composite wing 
you got to replace the wing. Just this leading edge alone is tens of thousands of dollars, let alone the wing. Well, in business overall, what's some advice you would give to someone that wanted to start a business? Before you start a business, I would say you got to start with yourself. Um, when I started seeing growth, not just in this business, but, but to be mentally prepared for business is analyze yourself, analyze the costs. Are you willing, are you willing to make the sacrifices of time that it's going to take for you to be successful? You know, uh, what are your priorities? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it just for monetary value? Or are you doing it for a better life, a better life for your family? Um, are you willing to own up to your mistakes? One thing that, that it's vital and important when, when you screw up, it's no one else's fault but your own. Or do you have that mindset of looking in the mirror and saying, I'm the screw up today. I'm the one that did this. Make I made that right. bad choice. Mm -hmm. It's not so-and-so's fault, so-and-so's fault, so-and-so's fault. It's always, right. you got to be able to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm, I'm the screw up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's messing this up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I've had some, some other things that, that I've tried to hustle up, not necessarily like a big business or anything like that. Um, and, and it just never worked. And I wonder, did it not work because I wasn't there yet with self accountability, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. Just kind of randomly talking, but yeah. What are the biggest areas of the aviation or shall I say, do you mostly clean jets, single engine, twin engines, or it's just across the whole gamut? Across the whole board. No, no higher intensity of maybe the jets or? Are we getting more into jets? Absolutely. Um, but we do everything, man. Anything that, that's got a prop on it or a Jet turbine, engine, right, yeah. we're, we're all about it. We love it. What are some of the, I don't know, two, three or four attributes that you really look for in a franchisee? Besides hustle. the hustle, I knew it, you were going to say hustle, that. Man. But it, 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 it's one of those things where really the, the it's primary? got to be your nature. Even if you've never done detailing of any kind in your I life. would rather have somebody who has the hustle than the skill to detail, in my opinion, because you can teach the art of detailing. Can you teach the tension to detail? With time. Uh, but more than anything, you can, you can be artistic in your trade, but if you don't have the hustle, You'll, you'll never grow into a, a, a bigger, into a bigger business. You know what I mean? You're always going to stay kind of small minded because you got, you got to have that hustle. You got to have that drive to get the customers and, and how to sell and upsell and those kinds of things like that. Um, not be timid around people to be able to be eccentric, if you will, get, get in, in front of kind of like faces. these jet owners are. Yes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's right. one of, it's a trade. Like, right, yeah. A lot of times, you know, being in this industry, you, if you've got a, a jet or even an aircraft, even the small ones are expensive. If you've got a, an aircraft in general, you got money. Uh, but but in, in success, to back you up, a common trait that you see in these successful individuals, they're flamboyant. I mean, oh, yeah. they're, 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 you got to have a big ego to get where you are. They're, I mean, they're in your face. They give you that. that hard handshake right. and they know how to hold a conversation and they know mm -hmm. how to do all that stuff. And that's vital. That's vital. It's all about relationships. Business is, is mm -hmm. all about your relationships and, 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 and marketing and networking and Hey, how's it going? My name's Josh from, I'm a Sparrowhawk mobile detailing. I do this, that blah, 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 not being scared, you know, to get in someone's face. Not obviously. Well, not, I don't you know. know. Yeah. So, you mean, yeah. Uh, that, that's that's vital, absolutely vital. You can't have a timid, shy guy. Right. That's, that's, that's not going to work. I would suppose your franchisees, what you're looking for too, are people that are in maybe larger areas, larger cities. You know, that's a common misconception. Of course, does it help? Absolutely, absolutely. But you'd be surprised how many small regional airports, municipal airports, uh, private airports are all over this nation. I mean, they're absolutely everywhere. I was talking with a, a potential franchisee out of Midland just yesterday, and we were talking about it. And while we're on the phone, I was explaining to him, you know, about the market, how to do all that kind of stuff. And he's got an international airport near his his, uh, his his town and whatnot, or city. And as we go to to Google Maps, there's nine airports in Midland, Texas area. Nine. 
but that's America that's in general. That's oil money too, though, right? Oil money. There is a lot of oil money out there. But with that being said, even in my small farm town that I grew up in, uh, partially in Hobart, Oklahoma, small little farm town. I mean, not a whole lot going on. You can, not exaggerating, you could hold your breath on the highway that, that, that borders the town and pass it while you're still holding your breath. I've done it. Um, that's got a regional airport. So airports are everywhere. It's, everyone thinks of their JFKs or their DFWs or IAH or, you know, um, all these major airports. Yes, obviously those airports, but there are hundreds or there are thousands and thousands of little airports that are full of aircraft. They're full of Cessna 150s, 172s, 182s, 206s, all your you know various Pipers and Moonies, and they're full of them. And, and that's all opportunity. They're not going to clean it themselves, more than likely. Some do. Half but. and half, I would say, but they all want you know the the protection of the ceramic coatings and paint corrections. You got think about it like this. You got all these guys that are in the automotive side, the car shows and everything like that, and they have their baby. They have their 65 Mustang or their Fastback or whatever, their Camaro. That's their baby. You see them out there and they got their little towel and they're just, these aircraft owners are worse than that. And the big thing is, is they got money. Right. <laughs> so they'll spend whatever it takes mm -hmm. to, to protect their baby and to keep it looking clean. And they go on these fly-ins with all their other aviation buddies that own aircraft and it's always... Um, for a lack of a better word, it's, it's it's just a pissing contest of hey, mine looks better than yours, or oh, I got mine this, or I got mine that, or I'm protecting it from corrosion with my ceramic coating and all of that, but it looks amazing. And these guys did this, you know. It's that, going back to the marketing side, but it's um, those little airports are full of those guys. All right, one last question. I want to add something that's just kind of unrelated, but I want to ask a question just to kind of see what makes entrepreneurs tick. What's the meaning of life for you besides loving your family and your children? So more important to me, even more than loving my wife and, and, and my children, the, the meaning of life for me is to glorify God and absolutely right. everything Beautiful. I do. Um, from being a steward of what he's given me in my family, my wife, my children, uh, my job, uh, this career, this, this business that he's, he's blessed me with, um, I see it as nothing is mine. Everything is God's. He's just blessed me with the capabilities and the support and the means to be a steward of what he's given me, which is now this on top of everything else. Well, Josh, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and uh, coming on this channel and sharing your story and uh, help inspiring others. Thanks a whole Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. I appreciate you, brother. All Thank right, you. man. What's so impressive about Josh is the fact that he's decided to make it happen. He works full time and he's a preacher and he started this business and is franchising it. It's up to you. You can make things happen or you can sit back and do nothing. Doing nothing, that's the easiest thing to do. Well, I hope this video added value and you enjoyed it. I'm Curtis Mulberg. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.